So Nodlam Limited, this came from the um, 2019 paper two. I've put a link in the, uh, in the notes for this one so that you can find a copy of the question. Hopefully that's in focus, you'll be able to see what's going on. So this is optimum use of scarce resources or limiting factors. So this is where something is in short supply and we can't make all the units of something as much of, of everything as we'd like to. So we're given a table here, the, um, the company's got three different products, A, B and C, and the demand in units is as follows. So there's no point making any more than we've got demand for. And in an ideal world, we'd make all of these units. Okay, so we're given some information here about the price structure. So we've got the selling price, we've got the direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead, so we can pull out our variable cost there. And then we've got the fixed cost there, the fixed overheads, £28. So because it's marginal costing, we're going to be focusing on contribution. Contribution is going to be the selling price minus the um, direct costs. So that will give us the contribution per unit. And then the fixed overheads, we can work out how much the fixed overheads are, because remember back to absorption costing, if we're doing it on a per unit basis, if we're saying that for um, product A, the fixed overheads are £28 a unit, we can find the total amount of overheads, the budgeted overheads, by multiplying 28 by 5,500. We could do the same for B, 6,200 by 25 will give us the total overheads for B. Same for C, and add them all together, that gives us the total overheads or the fixed cost. So we could then um, you know, develop the question further. So if we need to find that figure, that's how we're going to get it. it. Tells us that materials cost £2 per kilo. So we can find out how many kilos go into each unit of output. So that means that if it's £24 for um, product A and it's £2 a kilo, 24 divided by 2 is 12 kilograms. Um, we can do the same for product B, £20 worth of materials divided by £2 is going to give us 10 kilos of materials going in there. And then £22 of materials divided by 2 is 11 kilos there. Now that is going to be useful to us in a minute spoiler alert because if we read on we'll see that there isn't enough material to make absolutely everything so we're going to have to um, work out how best to optimize what materials we've got um, in order to achieve the greatest level of profit so it tells us here that the supplier of direct materials has experienced some technical problems and has been unable to supply the usual quantities required by the business due to this material shortage only 176,840 kilograms are available during the production period. So that's the maximum amount we've got available. Now we could work out exactly what would be needed, but there's, there's no point. We'll take it um, as read that there isn't gonna be enough materials to, um, to satisfy the full amount of demand. So it's asking us to calculate the maximum profit that can be made, allowing for the optimum use of the scarce material resource. So what we're gonna need to do is think about how much contribution each one of these, first of all, earns us per unit, and then we're going to drill it down further and find out using these, these figures here, the amount of kilos of material that go into each product, how much contribution each one of these products earns us per kilo of raw materials. And we'll then be able to rank them one, two and three, concentrate our efforts on making the highest ranked ones, the ones that earn us the greatest contribution, not per unit, but per kilo of raw materials. So we're going to find the contribution per unit, first of all. OK, and the way we're going to do that is to start with the selling price, take away direct materials, take away direct labor, and take away um, variable overhead. So if we do that for product A, we are gonna end up with a contribution per unit, I reckon of 78 pounds. Let's stick some pound signs in there because I'm always nagging my students to label things up properly, so I ought to follow my own advice. If we do the same then for product B, so we take the 112 selling price minus those three variable costs, we're gonna be left with a contribution of 70 pounds, sorry, 72 pounds per unit. And if we do the same for product C, 90 pounds selling price minus these three here, that's gonna give us a contribution of 55 pounds. Now, if we're just interested in contribution per unit, obviously A gives us the highest one, B gives us the next highest, and C gives us the lowest contribution per unit. But what we need to do is work out the materials used. So the number of kilos that goes into making each product, so we've got 12, 10, and 11 respectively, 10 kilos and 11 kilograms. So if we divide contribution by the materials used, that gives us the contribution per kilogram. And this is gonna be the key to solving this question. So if we divide 78 
by 12, that gives us a contribution per kilo of £6.50. If we divide 72 by 10, that's going to give us £7.20 per kilo. And 55 divided by 11 gives us £5 per kilogram. So what we can then do is rank the products, to give them a ranking. So the one with the highest contribution per kilogram, not per unit, is number one. So that's product B. The next highest is product A, so that's going to be number two. And the lowest contribution per kilo is um, product C. So in terms of the production schedule, the maximum quantity of materials is up here. It's the 176,840 kilograms. Okay. So what we've got to do is work out how we can best allocate that to the units of output. So we'll start with the product that was ranked number one. And the maximum demand for that is 6,200 units. So product B, we're going to make 6,200 units. And each one is using 10 kilos. Okay, so 6,200 times 10 kilos means that we are using 62,000 kilos. Okay, product A is the next best one. So we can make 5,500 of those, and each one is going to take 12 kilos. That's going to give us 66,000 kilos. Okay, now what we've got to do is work out how much we've got left. So the materials remaining, towards the end here of my page, I'm running out of space. So the materials remaining is the 176840 minus the 62,000, minus the 66,000, which is 48,840. And we're going to use those to make product C. Now, product C uses 11 kilos. So product C, we can make 48,840 divided by 11. It means that we can make 4,440 units. Okay, so that's our production schedule. 6,200 units of product B, 5,500 units of product A, the second ranked one. We've got 48,840 kilos left to make product C, which takes 11 kilos um, per unit. So that means we can make 4,400 units. So 4,440 units. I missed a, a four out there of product C. Now we haven't actually answered the question. It says calculate the maximum profit that can be made allowing for the optimum use of the scarce material resource. Well the problem we've got here obviously is that I've run out of, of space. So I'm going to move on to a um, yeah because there isn't a, another page of that. I'm sure in the real exam there would have been plenty of space but I just haven't printed off enough pages. So the profit from um, this production. So maximum profit oops I don't know what I've done. I've set the camera up so it's yeah, not easy to read what I'm writing here. So let's work out the maximum profit. So contribution, we've got product A, or product B, let's start, let's keep it in the same order. Product B, 6,200 units, uh, which is what we worked out here. So we can make 6,200 units, and each one gives us a contribution per unit of £72 times 72, so 6,200 units times 72 is 446,400. Product A was the next best ranked one, if we look here. So product A, we were going to make 5,500 units, and each one earns us 78 pounds. So 5,500, just get the trusty calculator back again 5500 times 78 is 429000 okay then we've got product c which was 4440 units earning us a contribution of 55 pounds so 4440 times 55 pounds 4440 times 55 is 244 200. I'm just going to add that up to find total contribution. Let's add those three figures together. 429 
and 446,400. So total contribution, 1,119,600. Now what we've got to do is take off the fixed costs. Okay, now this is where we need to go back to the original data to find out what the um, fixed overheads are. So the fixed costs, what we're going to do is multiply up the demand by the fixed overheads per unit, and that'll tell us what the overheads are. So 5,500 times by 28 is 154,000. Squash that in there. If we do the same for product B, 6,200 times by 25 pounds per unit is 155,000. And then product C, 7,400 units times by 32 pounds is 200. And thirty-six thousand pounds. So if we add all three of those up together, and I'm going to write outside the lines, which is very naughty, um, just to show you the total: one hundred fifty-five thousand, one hundred fifty-four thousand. So the total fixed costs are five four five eight hundred. If we take those off of our oops, wrong page, total contribution minus five four five eight hundred. That will give us. The profit. Let's work that out. So five four five eight hundred one 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 nine six hundred means that the profit is going to be five seven three eight hundred. So on to the written part of this question because um, in section B, remember we get fourteen marks for the computational side of things and then six marks for the writing. It tells us here that materials are usually purchased from a single supplier. This supplier is based in the UK, and so delivery has previously been reliable. Due to the established trading relationship, the business is able to negotiate a trade discount, which is reflected in the cost per kilogram. The material is also of a very high quality, which has enabled the business to develop a good reputation with customers. This reputation is extremely important because competition is strong in an increasingly crowded market. Um, a shortage of materials is expected to cause production problems. Well, we already know that because we've just worked it out um, that we're not going to be able to make the full amount of product C. Um, a potential supplier has been found that is based in Europe. This supplier can immediately fulfill the anticipated shortfall of materials and could supply on a long term basis. So what you've got to do is advise whether the business should use another supplier to overcome the expected shortage of material. So I think a good starting point is to go back to the original data here. So remember product C, we were saying we could only make 4,440 units with the existing level of materials. Now, if we were to make the full amount, well, let's go get the right question here. So the additional contribution that could be earned is going to be the difference between the 7,400, which is the full demand, and the 4,440 units that we um, can make of product C there. So it's an extra 2,000, what does that work out? 2,960 units, and each one is giving us a contribution of 55 pounds. So the additional contribution is going to be my calculator 2960 times 55 pounds so by doing this we can see that actually you know it's going to be worthwhile um, doing obviously that contribution may well come down if this new supplier is more expensive so um, you know we'd need to find out exactly what they're gonna charge the other advantage is that we can satisfy the full demand remember if um, we can't make enough of something it tells us here that you know the competition is strong so the chances are one of our competitors might come in and if we lose customers for, for product C, we might lose our market share overall with the other products. Um, so customer satisfaction, being able to do it is a big um, plus there. And we're also going to maintain our maximum capacity utilization because presumably these figures have been um, worked out based on our current capacity in our factory. So if we were only able to make 4,440 units, we'd be underutilizing the capacity. So we potentially have staff um, you know, with nothing to do. That's not a good situation. Remember, all the overheads are still there. They don't disappear just because we're making a lower level of output. Those costs are, are fixed regardless of the level of output. So what we are, other things we need to think about um, 
uh, is it sensible to have all of your eggs in one basket? So at the moment, they usually get all their materials from a single supplier. Um, if something happens to that supplier, like has happened here, they're not going to be able to um, supply the full amount, then it helps to have other suppliers on board. So you're diversifying your supplier base, which has got to be a good thing. Um, in terms of arguments against doing this, obviously the cost is probably not going to be um, as cheap as our current supplier. At the moment, we're getting a really good trade discount. We've got economies of scale. If we're buying a much smaller amount here, it's likely to be more expensive. It's going to be potentially shipping charges um, and import duties and all that kind of thing. So we've got no you know, potential bulk buying discount. We've got no trading history established with this supplier. And they may well sense our desperation and, and hike the prices up because they know we, we need them. Um, so we don't know about the quality because we've got, um, you know, the, at the moment, the material is of an excellent quality, very high quality. We don't know what the quality will be like um, of the, uh, the stuff that we're going to get from uh, the European supplier. Obviously, if the quality suffers, the product suffers, brand reputation suffers, so all of those bad things. So that might um, lead to lower sales and lower profits um, in the long run. Um, and also, we don't know how reliable this supplier is going to be. The existing one is very reliable, They've got a great relationship and so on, um, whereas this one is it's untested. So it could be great, but we don't know that. So you need to point out the pros and cons and then give advice. Um, and I think, to be honest, it's probably a bit of a no-brainer. Uh, by taking the um, supplier on, you're diversifying your supplier base, which is always a good thing, not to have all your eggs in one basket. And uh, and you can satisfy demand. Um, but if you didn't think it was worth the risk and you should just stick with the existing supplier and you know go with the lower level of output, then you could put that. Either answer would be equally valid, but make sure you don't sit on the fence with this one and get splinters. Thanks very much for watching.